What is up, theology comrades, and welcome to another episode of Theology Matters. In one of our previous videos, we compared the constructive task of theology to the construction of a map. But when we are constructing a map, we often do so with the recognition that it's representing something very real and tangible in the world. A road map is a map of a road. I mean, we can go to that road, we can drive on it, we can get out of our car and physically measure it. But how do we do that same thing with something that isn't quantifiable? How do we measure God? In today's video, we're going to dive into some of these questions about how we can know God. And we're going to explore how for many theologians, their quest for knowledge about God starts with revelation. So on that note, let's get growing. Revelation means to reveal something that was previously unknown, to disclose or unveil knowledge that was previously inaccessible. In theology, we use the term revelation to talk about the ways in which God reveals God's self to creation. The most obvious example of revelation in the Christian tradition is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But before we dive too deep into this topic, it's important to note that Christianity is only one religion out of many religious traditions that emphasize the importance of revelation. The overwhelming majority of religious traditions in the world have some sort of event, tradition, scripture or prophet that they believe helps reveal something to them about God. However, in the Christian tradition, revelation can be broken down into two distinct categories, general revelation and special revelation. Now before I dive too deep into the differences between general and special revelation, I think it's incredibly important to note that these categories are influenced deeply by Greek philosophy. These philosophical perspectives that many of the early theologians that were wrestling with these issues and questions carried with them constructed a view of God that was very distant from creation. These philosophical perspectives that influenced many of the theologians at the time allowed them to construct a view of God that place God outside of our material reality. Because these philosophical perspectives often lead to the conclusion that God is removed and distanced from our material reality, God can only be revealed from this understanding through revelation. And this leads us to the first category, general revelation. General revelation is the idea that we can encounter God in some sense through creation. The argument suggests that if God is the creator of all things, then there must be something within creation that reflects God's nature. This includes things like philosophy and reason, our ability to experience the world around us, and how maybe we might have a profound experience in the woods one day where we just say, holy crap, God exists. If general revelation is about how we can know God through our reason, intellect, or through sensory experience, then special revelation is reserved for those moments when God reveals something to you that you would never have been able to know apart from that experience. So when you hear people talk about how God spoke to them directly or how there's something so incredibly important wrapped up within the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus that nothing outside of that experience portrays that same message, then they're often talking about special revelation. For most people, when they're talking about special revelation, they're talking about scripture and they're talking about the ways in which God reveals God's self to them supernaturally or through miracles. During the Reformation, theologians like Martin Luther and John Calvin began to question whether or not general revelation was all that important. After all, if the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is the central message of Christianity and the way that we know God, then it doesn't really matter if you have an enlightening experience on a mountaintop somewhere. The important things to know about God are only revealed through Jesus, who happened to be recorded in history, in scripture. The Enlightenment brought with it a radical new way of talking about truth. Reason now became the primary authority on how we interpret our experience of the world. And with that arose a distrust of anything that was not empirically verifiable. Things like tradition, superstition, folklore, and even revelation now had no basis in our quest for truth. In this way, the Enlightenment challenged any model of belief that built its foundation on revelation. You couldn't just say things like, God exists because the Bible says so, or God exists because God told me God exists, because there was no basis for that claim. 
The predicament that post-enlightenment thinking is placed on theology has led many theologians to attempt to rediscover what it means to know God. It's challenged many of the classical views of Revelation so much that current understandings of Revelation often look very little like their classical counterparts. Some go as far as suggesting that Revelation is a foreign concept of the Hebrew Scripture and the New Testament, and that it should just be thrown out altogether. And some suggest that we should collapse this dualistic approach of general revelation and special revelation into one thing, and say that God doesn't exist separate from our reality, but is actually the ground of our very being. Today there are countless theologians approaching the question of how we can know God. And every last one of them has to, at the very least, wrestle with the doctrine of Revelation. I would actually love to hear your thoughts on Revelation. Is it important? Is it unimportant? Should Revelation be something that's central to our system of belief, or should it be something that's kind of extra or on the side? Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. In this video, we learned that Revelation can be broken down into two categories. General Revelation, which is the idea that God can be known through creation, and Special Revelation, which is the idea that there are certain aspects of God that we can only know when God self-discloses those things to us. We learn that both the Reformation and the Enlightenment pose significant challenges to these classical understandings of Revelation, and that theologians right here and right now in our world are wrestling with new understandings of the world and trying to figure out how we can actually know God. As always, you can find resources in the description below. I try to leave links to books and articles and resources that I find helpful when I'm researching these topics so that you have an opportunity to dive into these ideas and concepts on your own. If you like my work and you want to continue learning more about theology, like this video and hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Theology Matters.